Asian Network. Zina Thaman, what a pleasure to have you here. How are you? I'm well, thank you, Harun. Thank you for having me. You know, I don't often start interviews by saying what a great honour it is for me to be sat in the presence of an absolute legend. And you really are. And that's why you're here this evening for the UK Asian Film Festival. Uh, how did you react when you were first approached to attend this festival? Um, I, was, I was quite delighted because it's been about five years since I've been here. And uh, to come for such a prestigious event, especially when the theme this year is revolution, and it's about giving women a platform to showcase their projects, their work, their stories. Uh, I was absolutely, absolutely delighted to be part of the process. In fact, when you were here five years ago, you were here for a Nazia Hassan tribute evening. It was a, 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 their annual fundraiser, actually. And you've always lent yourselves to causes or, or real themes that mean something to you. Uh, without me spelling it out, you tell me why revolution has played such an important part in your career. Um, I think basically, Harun, it's because of the kind of projects that I did, the projects that I was involved with. I actually, professionally, I was accepted by the audiences, playing the role of a hippie girl who died of a drug overdose. And that was truly a first for the Indian audiences. And then subsequently, I went on to play this uh, bad, good girl in Roti Kapra Makan, who chooses, who chooses the rich man over the poor man. Um, and, you know, lots of roles with shades of grey, which were unheard of in Indian cinema because it was either specifically the villain or the leading lady, the vamp or the leading lady. Well, this is what's interesting about your journey, is that despite playing the liberal, modern, urban girl, you were never called a vamp. Why do you think that is? That's because most of the parts, there was always a reason for the character to be the way she was. Uh, because see, in a film like Roti Kapra Maka, though she chooses the rich man, she gives up her life for the poor man. So um, there were specific characters which were liked, that were loved, and these films were successful. And um, yeah. When we talk about revolution, it's fair to say that you were the first sex symbol of Bollywood cinema as well in the 70s. Was that a label you took seriously at the time? No, not really. I had a bit of a Western upbringing and, uh, you know, I took to wearing a swimsuit or Western clothes quite easily. Um, whether it was, uh, you know, in Devanand's Hira Panna lying on a hammock or, you know, whatever. Or Feroz Khan's Qurbani and, you know, playing a nightclub crooner. Um, so I think it was the costumes I wore and the fact that I was westernized and, you know, uh, which uh, lent uh, me, uh, which led to me being called the sex symbol. No, I never took it seriously. No. You might not have taken it seriously, but it was a label that millions used to describe you at the time. And it did lead to you being typecast in the early 70s as well, didn't it? Absolutely, because I think most Indian producers believe that nothing succeeds like success. It's a business after all. And uh, most producers tend to repeat uh, an artist in, in the role or the genre that they have already been accepted in by the audiences. So definitely I went through a phase of that, for sure. And it was with Satyam Shivam Sundaram where your image transformed again. And what I think most people don't know is the wonderful story about how you actually got that role. Because even today, it's taboo for an actress to go and approach a director and say, hey, I really want to work with you. You went one step further. Tell us what you did to get that role. Well, Harun, I had been working with the great Raj Kapoor as my co-star and we were doing a film called Vakil Babu where he played the title character. So we were on sets and he would constantly be talking about his project Satyam Shivam Sundaram in between shots and, and about his main female character Rupa. And I was fascinated. I was really quite fascinated. And uh, I, I had always been playing very urban western parts and had been accepted by the audiences. So. Um, I know that every actress at that time really wanted to be cast in a directorial venture of his. So when I was shooting close by to his studio, I, and, and my work had been wrapped up for the day, so I dressed myself and my interpretation of his character and went to the studio and, uh, you know, announced myself as the character Rupa. And uh, I think he was very pleasantly surprised because he said, this girl is such a big star, and yet she's so keen on doing this. And, um, well, he called Krishnaji to come and they gave me some gold guineas and, you know, I was signed for the project. 
What an incredible story. And really, that theme of determination, or those personality traits of determination, hard work, passion, are the three things that you say led to your success. Because in your own words, you say you weren't the greatest actress at the time. Well, I, I learned as I went along, because it, acting is a craft. And when I actually joined films, I really did not know that much about it. But over the years, I honed my craft and I understood the business. And yes, I was extremely hardworking. Yes, I was extremely dedicated. I was not very familiar with uh, the Indian language at the time, which really improved uh, over the years. So definitely, it is hard work and passion and the drive. And then, of course, having the opportunities, that really counts. You know, you were working in a time where misogyny was ingrained in Indian culture, where men were the leaders of the house, where if you didn't wear a sari, you weren't seen to be a person of virtue. How did you fit in to that dynamic? I don't think I did, <laughs> which is what worked for me. <laughs> but your day-to-day -day life, you know, whether that be off screen as well, uh, were you judged by people for the decisions you made? Um, I think, see, it's all about perception and it's the way people perceive you and it's your public image, you know, that people relate to as opposed to your day-to-day -day life and what you do in your private life. So whenever I did meet people, there was always a sense of having to break down that entire public perception and then start from, you know, zero. Do you think you were too nice for the time? Because, you know, when we think of the 70s and we think of the leading ladies and we think of you or uh, Rekha or Hema Malni or Jaya Bachchan or, or all of them, you were always the most approachable, I think, of at the time. You know, everybody else had a certain level of distance from the media, whereas you were fun, you were cool. You know, you had those personality traits that I think really resonated with the audience. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. It was all good. What are your fondest memories of that time? Um, the people that I worked with. I worked with some wonderful people, whether they were directors, producers, or leading men of the time. People who were very skilled in their craft and, you know, who were on top of their game. So, yes, it was quite memorable. You know, we've mentioned that the UK Asian Film Festival's theme this year is revolution. And Bollywood is going through a revolution of sorts again right now, particularly when it comes to gender equality. I would like to know from you what the balance of male to female power was in the 70s when you were a leading actress. And was it something that was quite prevalent at the time? Um, India is a patriarchal society. Films are financed by men, written by men, and mostly about men. Uh, leading men were always paid a lot more than the leading ladies. Uh, the success of a film really was carried on the weight of the leading man's shoulders. So it was, uh, uh, there were very few films, you know, few and far between, that were women oriented or where we had skillful uh, female technicians at the time. But there has been a change, and I'm really happy for that. How hard was it for you as a woman in the 70s and 80s when it came to standing your ground, for example, with pay parity? You know, like you said, the men were paid more than the women, but in several of the films, maybe even in a film like Kurbani, your two songs drove that film, whether that be Lela or Lela or Ab Jasa Koi. You know, you were really at the forefront of what was happening in Hindi cinema, and yet there was such a big difference in the way the men and f women were being paid? Well, I, I cannot talk about Kurbani because Feroz Khan was a producer and the director and I don't think he paid himself anything as right. an actor. <laughs> so I probably got paid much more than he he paid himself. But, in but there were, yeah, but in uh, films like in Safka Tarazu, which was, you know, a woman oriented project and uh, I got a percentage of the, you know, of, of, of the distribution. So yeah, that was, that was fair. But uh, otherwise, um, not really the case. And I'm going to take a tangent here because we spoke about those two films. Uh, with Gurbani, the interesting story is that Faroz Khan had approached you for another film to play a supporting actress. Mm -hmm. And you said, sorry, bye-bye, I only want to play a leading actress. Tell us about that. 
<laughs> That's true. He called me up and he wanted me to play. Um, I, I don't remember it, whether it was with Hema Ji or who, who his main actress was. He did offer me a supporting role, and I I was uh, looking to you know uh, boost my stock at the time, and so I said uh, no to him, and I don't think that he was very happy because I heard there was a, a very strong exchange of words at the time. <laughs> It was hardly an exchange, there were a lot of expletives, you know, <laughs> on the other side of the phone. And that was that, you know. So subsequently, when he did his next film, he did approach me to play the main female part. And look how that turned out, I mean... It was great, and he was wonderful to work with. And the other film you mentioned there was Insaf Katarazu. Now, in an interview you did with the BBC in the 1980s, you said that women hardly got chances like Insaf Katarazu to prove their acting metal, to prove their their, their kind of skills on screen. How frustrating was that at the time? Um, you can only work with, you know, with the opportunities that you have. And you can only work within the parameters of what is given to you. So I personally did not have a sense of frustration. I, uh, I chose my projects, you know, from what I was given, whether it was Manoranjan or Insafka Tarazu, whether they were fun films, Chori Mirakam, uh, you know, light bubbly films, um, Great Gambler, yeah, Mahan. Um, so you, you pick your projects from what you're given. Would you call yourself a, a feminist? At the moment, definitely. But at, at that time? Was it hard to be a feminist? You know, I was not thinking in terms of being a feminist. I was thinking in terms of doing work sure. and, you know, uh, doing what I could with, you know, the opportunities that I had. So all these very uh, deep questions, when you're that young, you don't really think about all of that. But, uh, you know, as you grow older and you look at the world and you look at your perspective in, the, you know, in terms of, 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 uh, of the globe, yes, you start thinking about uh, equal rights for women, uh, equal opportunities for women, especially in a country like India, uh, for, you know, where there's a lot of young women are, are deprived of education and uh, are, you know, don't have the correct kind of protection, the girl child. So you do think of all these things later in life, especially when you, when you become a parent yourself, for sure. One of the other major revolutions that's taking place in the Hindi film industry right now is standing up against sexual harassment and misconduct, widely known as the Me Too movement that's trans, trans, well, travelled from Hollywood across to India. How much of an issue was sexual harassment and misconduct during your time in the industry? I can only speak for myself. Um, a lot of people talk about the casting couch and so on and so forth. I received success with you know, almost my first film, Harira Mare Krishna. So I had a lot of people approaching me for work based on that success. So I personally did not experience that. But do you think that there was a strong enough network of support for actresses who wish to spoke out? I mean, we are now hearing with the Me Too movement about stories of actresses in the 90s who were scared to speak out at that point. Surely in the 70s and 80s, you can advise me better, but surely in the 70s and 80s, there was an even stronger reluctance to speak out. Harun, I don't know personally because, you know, whoever my contemporaries were, whether it's Hema Ji or Rekha or Shabana, I don't think any of them have spoken up on, you know, or about any, any misconduct in, you know, this way. Sure. So I really cannot talk about this uh, because I have no first-hand knowledge of it. Sure. But I think it's very important for women to be respected in their workplace. But the Hindi film industry in the 80s did have a reputation of ostracizing women who spoke out. My example being one of your strongest contemporaries, Praveen Babi at the time. She had to take a long break from Hindi cinema for speaking out at that time. If she had the stronger support network, or if something like the Me Too movement existed then, do you think more actresses would have spoken out? Did Parveen really speak out? And if so, who did she speak out against? I mean, she, um, uh, she's somebody I, I worked with, and very beautiful girl, very talented actress, but I think that there were some health issues with her. So I'm not sure that she really spoke out against a person, a person per se, but she took a hiatus before she came back, and she had a lot of uh, health issues to deal with when she did speak out. Um, so um, 
that is the status quo with Parveen. So really that was a different issue altogether? Oh, completely. Totally. Completely. I do want to talk on a lighter note about that rivalry with Parveen Barbie because oh, there was no rivalry. It, that's what I want to know from you. There was absolutely no rivalry. <laughs> we worked together on a film called Ashanti and we worked together on a film called Mahan and you know, it always happens that, uh, you know, it's the media that creates a rivalry. Or Whether it's a Sri Devi or Madhuri and, and that kind of... Yeah, but because the film industry was a large enough space for, um, for Parveen to work, for me to work, we both had projects and we were both busy. Am I right in believing you were offered the role in Amar Akbar Anthony that yes. Parveen Babi did? Yes. And, the, and, and I believe that's the one film you wish you had done? Yes. Tell me about that. Well, I just, the, the producer director, Manmohan Desai, had just made a film with me which was a huge success called Dharamveer. Right. Yes, or Mehbooba. Then, oh, yeah, Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> and then subsequently, when he was planning this project, he um, offered me this part. So the part was much smaller and the paid check was way smaller. So I said, you know, I just gave you a hit. You know, I just gave you a big hit. Where did this business business savvy kind of persona come from? Because not every actress was willing to demand their worth at the time, were they? Oh well, I had I had a mother who was a businesswoman. You know, so I learned from the best. <laughs> sure, uh, and and eventually that was the one film that you say you wish you had done. Yeah, because it had some great music and it was a fun film and it went on to be quite successful. At the time, a, a film even like Amar Akbar Anthony, there was loads of multi-star as you were working with several of your colleagues in many of your films. And today it's so touching to see when you interact with him Amalni or Rekha at public events, there's a warmth there. Oh, definitely. But what were things really like back in the 70s and 80s? I mean, how much were people clawing for each other's roles? Not really, not really, because Hema Ji was well, you know, her, her place and her position was well defined in a certain image, so was Rekha. The only people uh, where there was considered that there might be rivalry was Parveen and myself, but the, you know, we all had ample work. Uh, Shabana was doing her own thing. So I, I, you know, there was nothing like that. Really. So really it was all tabloid and, and gossip magazine driven at all the time. Absolutely. I've heard you say that most of the things that were written about you at the time were false. Completely. It was about somebody I didn't know. I didn't know who they were talking about because there were stories there that were so weird and untrue. So do you look now when you see actresses clarifying things on Twitter and Instagram, do you wish you had those tools in the 70s and 80s? Not really. Not really because, you know, with time everything, you know, moves away and it's not a big deal. Asian Network.